everyone. Hello, folks. You are tuned into another episode of Listen in 3D. This is episode number 53. I'm your boy, Justin, a.k.a. Too Tall for You Fool. And I'm Netta, a.k.a. Wondrous Net. And together, we are both Team 3D, the hosts of Listen in 3D, where we discuss, dissect, and debate the music and the albums in the world of hip-hop and other genres. If you like what you're seeing, give the video a like or dislike. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Comment, share this around wherever uh, social media platform that you use. And most of all, importantly of all, subscribe. Want to help us out one step further? Click on that notification bell. That way you know when all our videos go live. And you're right on it when, when they go live. So you can watch them for your entertainment. That also includes shorts as well, folks. So um just a reminder um we we can podcast the show if you like but you know our primary home is youtube all our links to wherever you want to find us at in the description of this video and our main youtube page all right so we're getting into a pretty deep rapper today um i would have to say if you're gonna talk about this guy and i know you've probably heard this conversation before Top five, top ten MC of all time, perhaps. Uh, what What are your thoughts? Hmm. I don't. I don't know that I've listened to enough hip hop to say that. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he's in. He's in my uh, top five, not because of his lyrical ability, but just uh, more personal taste kind of thing. But mm-hmm. I could see. I could see somebody putting putting him up in the top ten. As far as his uh, lyrical ability. All right. And, you know, in terms of his lyrical ability and his controversial uh, stuff that he was doing in, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, (laughs) were were you blown away by what you heard or? Uh, No, because, I mean, I... I kind of heard, definitely heard the singles before. I heard of some of the stuff he said before. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I wasn't exactly blown away, but I was like, oh, oh no. (laughs) Like, you know. And yeah, yeah. well, I mean, I don't know if you've heard his most recent album, but if you have, (laughs) it's probably on the same level as this. I don't think. I think a lot of people younger than us may take it offense to it. I'm not going to say any names, but let's just get uh, right into it. <laughs> so today we'll be talking about Eminem's Marshall Mathers LP. It was his third studio album. It was released May 23rd, 2000. It was certified 11 times platinum. It peaked at number one on the R&B and hip hop album charts and number one on a Billboard 200. There were singles, including The Real Slim Shady, Stan, and The Way I Am. There were music videos for all three of the singles, and he had guest appearances by Dido, RBX, Sticky Fingers, Dina Ray, Snoop Dogg, Nate Dogg, Dr. Dr. Dre, Exhibit, and D12. All right, thank you for that. So Eminem, he's been around, you know, a long time, mid to late 90s. Um, He's from Detroit, Michigan. Not the first rapper to come out of Detroit. We've had, you know, guys that were before him. Insane Clown Posse. Boss, I know, was pretty popular in the early to mid-90s. And even though he's not exactly a a rap, well, I guess he is a rapper. Uh, Kid Rock would also count, too. He's also from uh, Detroit. But in terms of putting it on the map, it would be him and uh, his crew, uh, that he came with, uh, known as the Dirty Dozen, also known as D12. So, if you ever wondered what that's for, that's what it stands for. Uh, so, um, you know, King came from there, you know, founded by, you know, Dr. Dre. You know, they hooked up when he, Jimmy Iovine found his demo tape. He listened to it, they hooked up in the studio. Pretty much the rest is history, you know, the Slim Shady LP did wonders and you know he, he definitely topped it with you know this album here and um you know a lot, a lot of subject matter that you know comes into an album like this and pretty controversial at the time but you know um he definitely did makes um some stands with it you know um 
I remember him uh, performing uh, the single we'll talk about in a few minutes, Stand with Elton John over at the MTV Video Music Awards years ago. So, you know, that was a spectacular performance, you know, proving that, you know, he's not homophobic or, you know, anything like that, or, he, you know, hates gay people. So, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just definitely proof that, A, you know, freedom of speech is, you know, will, will run you very high. And definitely, he's the one that definitely set the bar in terms of what you could say and pushing it to, you know, to maybe its limits. I don't I don't know. But um, so, I mean, I only needed a few listens with this one. I um, had this CD growing up. I think I got it the first or second week it came out. Uh, went to a church camp uh, one summer and... Uh, took my CD, my little book of CDs with me. This was one of them. When I came back, um, it did not come back with me. Someone had stolen it from me. So I, when I made, when I had some money, I went to the record store again. Unfortunately, due to sale constraints, I had to get the censored version. And there, you know, there are differences between the the actual LP version and then the, you know, the censored versions, even one of the tracks being changed. So we'll get into that. <sighs> Overall, I mean, Eminem, he's a great rapper. He's not my favorite rapper. This isn't even my favorite project from him. I'd have to say Recovery is my favorite from him. Hopefully it's a, I think we'll do that later on down the line, but not anytime soon, obviously. But, um, but uh, my brother, he, he, he was my brother's favorite rapper growing up. My brother loved this guy and D12 and everything they did. So um, today we uh, shine flowers on this project, uh, the Marshall Mathers LP. So um, any childhood memories, thoughts on Eminem that you can oh, think yes. of? I, yeah, I, I heard a lot of Eminem growing up. I remember one of my first memories of him was when he said, hi, kids, do you like violence? <laughs> I remember my, my sister and my cousin, you know, we were just singing that. And yeah. I was just like, what in the heck? You know, this is this is nuts. And I have a, a memory of being in fourth grade when uh, Forgot About Dre was very popular. Oh, yeah. And there was a boy that was, he was talking in class. Mm. And the, teach, the, the teacher hit him with like, Oh, do you, do you have something you want to share with the class? And uh, he started like mumbling and having an attitude. And and the teacher, the teacher was probably like in her thirties or forties. She was like, nowadays everybody want to talk like they got something to say. <laughs> this comes out when they would have listened. And the class was like, we were roaring, like, what the heck is going on? The teacher knows that song, so he oh, was, that was uh, a fly chorus. That was a fly chorus. I actually can't wait to do two thousand one. When, when we get oh, there, yeah. yeah, that 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 was a good album, but yeah, that, that was he goes hard on very, that chorus. He goes hard. Yeah, very very good song. So I I heard him a lot throughout uh, my childhood. He had hit hit after hit after hit after hit, and for me, he was like a musical force you really couldn't escape. And I I enjoyed a lot of the songs back then, like a lot of the ones we're going to talk about uh, today. I mm. like back then, and I still like so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this was a re really good album. So, uh, very, very well produced. I, mean, I don't think it's his best produced album, but, you know, for the time, it definitely did have some pretty good beats. But before we get into the beats, um, the album covers, there are three different ones. If you're watching on YouTube, it's the one with him sitting in front of, like, some old house. There's also another one. Well, there's actually two more. There's one with him, like, like against the wall or something like that, if I can find it. Oh, yeah, here it is. There's one like against him against, like, a wall or something, like, in, maybe, like, in a stray jacket, and then there's another one of, like, him sitting at a desk. That one is in color. That was the one on the... for the special edition. So, of, of the covers, which one do you think is the best? Or which one do you like the best? Definitely the one when he's sitting on the porch um, of the house that he lived in when he was a kid. Yeah. In uh, ep episode 47, Illmatic, we talked about how Nas changed the game by mm -hmm. putting his childhood 
photo on the cover of his album, something that hadn't been done before in hip hop. And I think this uh, album cover follows that tradition. He's just kind of showing the audience how far he's he's come. I found a quote from him about this cover Mm -hmm. um, where he said, I had mixed feelings because I had a lot of good and bad memories in that house. But to go back where I grew up and finally say I've made it is the greatest feeling in the world to me. So I, I really love uh this album cover yeah i would have to say yeah, that is my favorite too i think it makes the most sense the one with him in the straight jacket like laying down i didn't like that one too much and then the i don't really count special edition yeah the special edition one i didn't really see too much in stores so um, it, it was okay though i mean just Simpson at a desk and it wasn't color but i think the one on him on the porch is probably the best one but it's not very very often that you have a uh, album come out with multiple album covers well unless you're taylor swift i guess but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think the the one when him him sitting down in the straight jacket he said he originally wanted to call this album amsterdam because i guess mm-hmm. he had gone to amsterdam and done a bunch of drugs uh, yeah. but i think uh, the porch one better better served him yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the porch was, you know, I think that that was the way to go, and that's the one I use uh, for for our visual doing this episode, and that's the one I will use for the thumbnail. So just in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So beats uh, or beater beats. So you know, it is he is from the family of Dre when it comes to the music. So there were quite a bit of good beats on here. I always let you kick this one off. What do you, what do you got? Um, yes, I liked uh, the real Slim Shady, Who Knew, and Criminal. But the the one that I thought was the best was the Way I Am. It was the bells for me, like barrel, barrel, like it, yeah. It, it it took it overboard for me. Which one did you like the best? I would have to say the Way I Am is definitely a good one. Uh, Criminal was a good one. And, you know, the real Slim Shady as well. You know, those those were all good beats. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have to go with those three. But my favorite of all of them was The Way I Am. So we agree there. Yeah, the bells and everything was just real good with The, the Way I Am. All right, so it's a single, single time. And I'll let you start. Where do you, what single do you want to start with? It's kind of tough to decide, at least for me. Um, probably with the real Slim Shady. The real Slim Shady, yes. Uh, all right, I'll kick this one off. Um, just just when you know people, well, I don't know if people thought, but just when he people thought he couldn't get any bigger, I guess he gets bigger putting this single out because I think it was the lead single off of this album. And for the most part, I got to give him credit where credit is due. He kills it. You know, just, uh, you know, he got everyone's attention with what he was saying. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, he just goes all over the place, you know, from t- talking about Tom Green, uh, you know, the Discovery Channel, you know, him, you know, Grammy, sitting next to Britney Spears. Uh, you know, talking about uh, he wants to sit next to Carson Daly and Fred Durst and <laughs> download an audio on MP3. Yeah, he just went all over the place. <laughs> um, music video I thought was kind of like okay, a bunch of people, you know, just being made like him white t shirt, jeans, uh, blonde bleach hair, whatever. And then when he performed this uh, at one of the award shows a while back, he uh, had a bunch of guys marching in just like him. So that that was kind of, you know, <laughs> just watching a music video kind of took that back. It's like, damn, how did he find so many people to just to dress like him? It's like, oh, he was Eminem, and he was <laughs> he was a rap superstar back then. So, I mean, he, yeah, he he definitely killed it with this song. Um, what, what were your thoughts on this song and the, and the whole music video? Yes, um, I, I remember seeing this video back when I was a kid. I like um, looking back on it. I probably didn't know who, who Kathy Griffin was back then, <laughs> but I, 
Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you know who she is now. That that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I, I was shocked to see her as staff at this at this mental facility, and then this uh, factory that he's standing in front of, mm-hmm. of making a whole bunch of M and M's. I, I thought that was really cool. Um, I liked how he had. He really has some animosity throughout this album for boy oh, yeah. groups and gir- gir- girl groups, and he has this fake in sync um, yeah. group. <laughs> that's included and then when he's when he spits in this lady's onion rings and then she actually eats it oh it's kind of uh, gross oh, man. Oh, it's kinda you know you, yeah you know it's fake it's kind of like that missy elliott thing where she spits into the camera yeah you know it's fake but it's still like oh, oh, oh like, so uh, yeah it probably doesn't make you want to go get onion rings later today but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but as far as the song goes i like how he starts it off Y'all act like y'all never seen a white person before. <laughs> so, and uh, I like how he's he's going with this theme of everybody has a little slim shady in them. Um, yeah. Every single person is a slim shady lurking. Um, he he says it's a million of us just like me who cuss like me who just don't give up like me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he says at the end he says yes there's a little slim shady and all of us lurking yeah. and he says. Uh, He's only giving you the, you the things you joke about with your friends in the living room. So he's just saying, I'm just the crazy side of everybody. So I thought it was a pretty good concept, pretty good song. And I really loved the, that Slim Shady con- conveyor belt. I thought that was a really... <laughs> I think one uh, of the... I think one of the... Oh, yeah, the conveyor belt was cool. And then I think one of the other funny parts of the video was when he was in that, that piece of shit car, the Pinto or... AMC Gremlin or whatever, just doing donuts in the parking lot. <laughs> I thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, he is a crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, it was a good song. I think he did choose the right song to lead off with this album. And, you know, it definitely drove the sales for sure. Um, all right. Uh, I guess the next song we can go to is Stan. Featuring Dido, and um, I know for me, it's like you listen to a song like this, and you know it's probably. I mean, I wasn't like this when it came to Eminem, but I'm sure there were like quite a bit of people who, um, you know, who were obsessed fans. I mean, and I think you could not just relate it to him, but you could relate it to just any any recording artist. Quite frankly, I mean, you know, there there you know there's some like super fans, obsessed fans who you know, want to be their idol and, you know, want to be with them and like, hey, I'm your biggest fan. Look at me, you know, just pay attention to me and, you know, just just becoming, you know, forgetting about like your everyday life. Like, you know, nothing matters anymore, but, you know, that person you idolize and, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's very dark and it, it could be disturbing. It, it just... For me, it just shows me the fact that, you know, just being an obsessed fan can really lead to, you know, bad things if you don't have that, you know, balance with, uh, <laughs> well, you know, with your uh, everyday life. You know, if all you think about is your idol. I mean, that's what I got out of it. Um, and, you know, definitely the the fourth verse was really was real no not the fourth the third verse was really deep when you know he was um in, in the car with, with his girlfriend locked in the trunk and it's just like god damn um refer for uh, referring to that song the phil collins song in the air of the night Ooh. <laughs> and then the, just the funny part about it though is how am i going to send this shit out and then <laughs> that was yeah he Sam Sam wasn't a smart thinker, apparently. <laughs> yeah, he he wasn't the brightest. Uh, I think the the word Stan has really uh, taken off in the last you know couple of decades. Like it, it's kind of a colloquial colloquial term for like a mm. crazy uh, fanatic at this point. Yeah, it's to the point where people who they might not even know the origin of the song or they might not know the song but they know what stan means yeah. uh so it's it's a really it's like they, they might as well put that in the dictionary as far as i'm concerned like <laughs> they put they put homer's uh dope they put dope in the dictionary because it, it, it became so known but 
um the the, the song itself yeah it, it's it's kind of chilling the, the first letter he's like a kind of like a normal you know a little crazed fan just yeah. just right into his guy the second letter things have escalated quickly <laughs> yeah they he's escalate like, and then yeah it goes from here to here to just <laughs> and then when Eminem's finally writing them back, it's just like, oh, it's too late. Like, <laughs> yeah, when he has the realization that the guy he saw on the news was the guy who wrote the letter, is is crazy. And he he does say uh, this was his message to fans to just not take things literally. Yeah. In the and it was big back then. It the really was. <laughs> yeah, just fans just. So yeah, I think that was a good. And now, did some of these fans listen? Probably not, but <laughs> <laughs> no. In the in a video, he uh, you know, the guy dyes his hair. He's mm. ignoring his pregnant girlfriend in favor of you know standing out in the basement of his. Uh, he has a wall covered with all M Ms mm-hmm. everywhere. Uh, when he gets mad and writes the crazy letter, he rips all, he destroys the whole room, rips all the Eminem photos off mm-hmm. the wall. And I thought it was really funny how in the in the song he's like, um, it's really messed up how you wouldn't uh, autograph the thing for my brother. He wants to be just like you, man. He likes you more than I do. And yeah. in the video, the bro- the brother is completely disinterested yeah. in Eminem. He's, he's just like, what's he's going on? He's disinterested until that. <laughs> Until the end, when he's at uh, the funeral, and it's like you see his hair, it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, now he's he's staying reincarnated at that point. But yeah, that was a it was a very unique uh, concept, a unique video. But you, Eminem was going through a very unique situation. Yeah, it, it was pan- pandemonium. De- definitely. Um. So uh, yeah, but you know, interesting video, and you know, just. Take it, you know, your idols. I mean, just, just give give them some space. You know, if they if you meet them, be blessed. But you know, don't don't become a stalker. Don't don't kill the people you love over uh, a recording artist in general. Not so much a rapper, but just a recording. Yeah, just just don't <laughs> yeah. try not to. Yeah, try not to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the way I am. Uh, one of the things uh, I liked about this song is how he just talks about like the industry pressure and you know how am I going to top songs like say Guilty Conscious and you know just uh, you know he goes uh, one of the lyrics I like in the song I don't know you and no I don't owe you a motherfucking anything I'm not Mr. NSYNC there he goes again with the NSYNC reference I'm not what your friends think I'm not Mr. Friendly I can be a prank a prick excuse me um any anything else lyrically um just you know him talking about fans again i think was uh one of the highlights for it um toward the end of the song um uh, i'm thankful for every fan that i get but i can't take a shit in the bathroom without someone standing it by it no one won't sign your autograph you can call me an asshole i'm glad <laughs> <laughs> i mean well i mean I mean, it was funny too because in the music video, like, there's like dudes outside the stalls, he coming out, and it's just like, how would you feel if you're coming out of a bathroom stall? It's just like, sign my autograph or just that, someone asking you just for anything, really. It's just like, bro, can I wash my hands first? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> Yeah, the um, he he's in the bathroom, and then when he's just sitting there trying to eat with his, with his daughter, yeah, you know, you can you can easily see how it how it could tick him off. And I think he's probably one of the few people who is like really going at his fan. Like he, this is pretty much kind of like a diss song towards yeah. his fans, um, amongst other people. I like how mm-hmm. um, he's uh, talking about music as yeah. his uh, outlet. Um, it kind of remind me of the last episode we did in, in Moss Def's song mm. "Love," where he says, "I start to think, and then I sink into the paper like I was ink. When I'm writing, I'm trapped between the line. I escape when I finish." And Eminem says something similar uh, of his music making process. He says, um, "It helps in itself to relieve all this tension, dispense any sentences, get in the stress that's been eating me recently off yeah. of his chest, and I rest again peacefully." 
So yeah. he's like, you know, he has to get his uh, his thoughts out on on a paper, and then he can rest. and And a lot of the parts on this song, he's he's breathless by the end of the uh, sentence, but it's 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 almost uh, the breathlessness is even very well placed. Yeah. Um, I I do like uh, the the same part you referenced when you say, "I'm not Mister Instinct." I think uh, part of his his hatred of these mm. boy groups and girl groups is maybe that the world is just comparing them yeah, to him. I think, and like, what? I think a lot of people were putting them in the same category as like you know those boy groups, Backstreet Boys, and Sync, uh, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears. I think he was put in the same category as, as them because, I mean, TRL he was on that show all the time so let's be real he had the same they had the same fan base that was no secret at least maybe at least half of those fans at least half so yeah. you know de- definitely i think he was he referenced them just to uh, like stay apart from them be like hey, yeah i'm not i'm not a pop guy man like i think that's what he was really trying to get at i mean that that's what i think uh one one more thing i want <clears throat> to reference in the from the second verse um when he talks about when a dude's getting bullied and shoots up his school and they blame it on Marilyn and the heroine where are the parents at and look where it's at you know uh talking about middle america and you know just how many school shootings have we've had since that song I mean, let's be real so i mean i think that's a that's a that's a real topic within its own i just uh wanted to reference that and then yeah, the part where you say middle America, now it's a tragedy. Now it's so sad to see in upper class city having this happening because yeah. I guess, you know, the, the the rappers, I guess he feels like they're kind of, the, the black rappers are mm-hmm. getting away with, you know, literal m- murder because they're, they're talking about whatever they want and he feels like mm-hmm. y'all are just targeting me because I'm white and now I'm targeting yeah. the white mid- middle class children. So, mm-hmm. it, which is not, uh, which is not true. I mean, NWA, I mean, the middle class like them. I mean, I don't think it, they intended to, you know, uh, promote to the middle class, but, you know, just, I mean, it, it just kind of happened that way. I mean, Eminem was just, you know, keeping up with uh, what, what what they were doing pretty much. And, <laughs> you yeah. know, because he's it white. I, a, you know. <laughs> it may have been just an optics thing, because mm-hmm. if you have all of these, uh, like, like in his Slim Shady video with all of the white boys going around with blonde hair and, and trying to be like him, mm-hmm. I guess, I, I don't know if that, that, that scared people or what, but in Eminem's view, he's being <laughs> targeted. But like you said, yeah. a, a lot of people were targeted too. Like even uh, in, the, in the early 90s, I think Tupac and Snoop Dogg, they had to uh, oh, yeah. go go against a, a lot of people for saying you can't say that in music and you know yeah. even easy had put that on it on his album cover that that stamp act yeah. so i guess it's been a long fought battle but maybe even more so for him just because he sold even more records so he had mm-hmm. a lot of more recognition all around yeah definitely man um all right that's it for the, the singles uh so if we go into our top three. This was, I guess, this was kind of tough for me. Uh, what do you got for your top three? I think the the, the tracks that they picked for the, uh, the the singles are the top three. I think those were the the three best. Those those were uh, your three favorites. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If I had to pick a, a other ones, mm. uh, which I think are like way far behind, but I'll pick Marshall <laughs> Mathers. And, and criminal, uh, but yeah. All right, for me, um, in terms of favorites, I mean, I think these three songs, I think they are the best songs, but in terms, but not my favorites. Only thing, only thing I will keep on my favorites is the way I am. I think that's a you know, I think it's the best song on the album in my opinion. Even more, I agree with that. yeah, even more better than uh, the real Slim Shady. I think the real Slim Shady was more uh, like a pop song to get people into the album but it's still one of the best songs but i think the way i am best song on there the other two i'm gonna go with um marshall mathers i think that was a really good song and then this is definitely a biased opinion but uh remember me (laughs) (laughs) it was just um and i'll get i'll get into why i really like that song honorable mention 
I'll do Amityville and yeah, oh, Amityville is honorable mention in criminal, I guess. Uh, so I guess I could start with, uh, I'll start with Remember Me. Uh, Remember Me was a sample actually from an RBX song. I forget, I forget the name of it, but I know he said Remember Me in it. I think it was off his debut album. And I could try to look it up real quick, but, um, let's see. The RBX, yeah, it was off the RBX files and yeah. Yeah, I forget I forget the name of the song, but it's not called Remember Me, but he uses that that uh, Remember Me thing. So that's where they got it from. So I like how he started out the song, Remember Me, Remember Me. And then, you know, uh, you know, RBX starts going and you know, he has that deep voice and it's just like you listen you're listening to the song, it's just like how is Zim and M gonna like top him? And then Sticky Fingers gets on the second verse, and you know he does this thing, and then it's just like I, I gotta say, Eminem really killed it in this one. I mean, I thought he he was able to keep up with RBX and Sticky Fingers in terms of like the flow, and I think it was just a, like a real song that just really showed me that Eminem I think can do any style, you know, from something like this to you know the 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 fast rap kind of like what he did on uh, forgot about Ray because he was rapping pretty fast on there too and you know he's done this years later as well but this was like the first song where it's just like okay this guy can do like any style and it's just I think it really just showed his like real talent and now that's why I I really like the song um you know the lyrically I like the the six minutes on shady your own reference. <laughs> Kind of like what uh what was it Dougie Fresh? <laughs> um, see, um, and any do you have any thoughts on uh, Remember Me? That that was honestly my least favorite song on the album. <laughs> 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 I I I didn't I didn't really care for it. Uh, it seemed like the first half of the album was kind of about Eminem, and the next half might have been just trying to put people on or something. I don't know, but yeah. I. I didn't really like it that much. I, I thought Amityville would have been your least favorite, or <laughs> Kim, or Under the Influence, or no, Kim was vulgar, but it wasn't like a bad song. I mean, Kim, it was, Kim, it was bad. A, Kim actually had a pretty good beat. I, I will give Kim yeah. credit, but it's it definitely is one of those songs. It's like, yeah, why did you write that? But. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, should have kept that one in the drafts. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the the ones to to be um listened to years later, I guess. And then Marshall Mathers, uh, I think, yeah. I mean, you know, he just talks about himself again for the most part. I think I kind of like it as a continuation of the way I am. Uh, again, you know, just the uh the you know the boy groups make him sick, you know, I thought that was kind of funny, and then, uh, <laughs> and then he talks about Vanilla Ice not liking him, and, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was, it was a pretty good song for the most part, just, um, like the end of the song, okay, let me give you some motherfuckers some help, uh, here, double XL, double XL, now your magazine shouldn't have so much trouble to sell, ah, fuck it, I'll even buy a couple myself, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Um, you said it was be honorable mention. What do you like about Marshall Mathers? Yes, he's just kind of telling his story. Um, he's talking about how the fame affected him and his, his mm. familial relationships. I thought that was cool. He says, last year I was a nobody. This year I'm selling records. Nobody ever gave a fuck before. All they did was doubt me. And yeah. he also says, uh, for every million I make, another relative sues. And he says, a half brother and sister who never seen me or even bothered to call me until they saw me on TV. <laughs> now, now everybody's so happy and proud. I'm finally allowed to step, step foot in my, my girlfriend's, girlfriend's house. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was, uh, I thought it was a, a good song, the fourth fourth best on the album. Yeah, it, it was it was a pretty good one. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, I don't think it was single worthy, but for the most part, it's uh, it, it was it was a good song, and you know, definitely. If, you do listen to any of the deep cuts if, of ones you like. I'm not going to, I'm going to leave my biased opinion out of it. Yeah, I would recommend Marshall Mathers, the song itself. It, it was a good song. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, for the most part. So we determined the three best songs. All right, so all right, so the special edition version. So let me get back to this. Um, so if you bought the censored version of this, Kim was so vulgar that they had to replace it. <laughs> they had to replace it with a song called "The Kids," which is a pretty funny song, actually. Um, it's, it's, yeah, you, you, uh, have you ever watched South Park or do you watch South Park? You're I've seen it before, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, just listen to it, and it's a lot of <laughs> South Park references. It's it's a, it's a pretty funny song, though. It's uh, it was a good replacement. Um, unfortunately, though, at least on the Spotify side of things, only the censored version of that song is on there, and obviously, it's on the censored version version of the album. So, but there was a special edition version that came out uh sometime later. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, you can get that song along with, uh, some music videos as well. So I'll try to pull up a track list really quickly. Uh, yeah, it was on the special edition and then also on the special edition, you, or limited edition, you got the real Slim Shady instrumental, the way I am instrumental, the stand instrumental, pretty much the three best songs, the kids, the explicit version of that song. And then The Way I Am, Marilyn Manson Remix, or Danny Lona Remix, but I guess Marilyn Manson adds uh, guitars or something to it, so. And I think I've heard it before. It's been a very long time. And then also on the limited edition, you get uh, the three music videos. Director's Cut. So. Speaking of the, the explicit lyrics, like, usually on Apple Music, I'm able to, like, follow along um, with the lyrics, but mm -hmm. not one song on this album did they have the lyrics. And there's some songs on Apple Music where they don't have them, but it's usually uh, very obscure songs, like, from the 80s or something that you can't follow along. But I think they yeah. just made the business decision, like, let's just not put the lyrics on this album. <laughs> I can understand it for a song like him, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So the special edition version, if you can find it, great. I mean, I know it's kind of hard to come by right now, at least at least on the Spotify side of things. All right. So recommendations. This wasn't very hard since you know I'm pretty familiar with these artists. Uh, Doctor Grace, two thousand one. We talked about this one. Uh, Eminem is on two of those songs um so on there and then another album eminem makes an appearance on is exhibits restless if we do an exhibit album it would this would probably be the first one and then uh kind of like going back to the song the way i am there's a song on that album we could talk about it a little later when we do the album um there's a song that he sings with exhibit on there called don't approach me which is which talks about you know fans again you know just coming to his home and his address ended up on the internet. Um, pretty interesting. I don't want to get too much into it, but if we ever, whenever, when we do that album, we'll talk more about it there. And then uh, D12's debut album, Devil's Night, which he appears on that one with his uh, D12 group. So, um, so yeah, those are the three recommendations, and plus, obviously, Eminem's full catalog. Definitely feel free to check that one out, especially with his recent album at the time of this recording, uh, The Death of Slim Shady. And if you're an old-school Eminem fan, you've probably heard it. If you haven't, what are you doing? Definitely go check it out. It's um, a lot, lot of the stuff that he did back in 99, 2000, early 2000s, uh, but just, you know, recent pop culture references as opposed to the ones back then i would say that would be the like the main difference so all right now we get down to our final thoughts um is does this album stick is it a timeless classic what songs you're taking back what tracks did you not like uh I'll let you start first um i mean all, all the uh... I don't think I'm really taking back any of the songs. All of the, <laughs> the, you know, the, the top, the, the three singles are, I think they're they're great songs and mm. they, those are timeless classics, but I, the, the rest of the album didn't really do 
much for me, but that's not to say that the three singles, they, they just picked three great singles. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think Eminem is, uh, he has a unique place in like hip hip hop history. Some some think he got big because he's white. Some think it's because he's like a shock uh, job. I, I I I don't think it was. Well, maybe it helped, but I mean there were white rappers before him, the BC Boys, Vanilla Ice. I think I, mean, I think I, it I think it did a little more than I, I think it was more than help. Like yeah. um, no. I would say he's he's very very lyrically talented. Yeah. But I, I don't think a a a the exact same black rapper, like if, if he was the everything exact same as mm. a black ra- rapper would sell as as much as he did, and I think he's admitted as much in his music. I think he still would be big if he were black, but I, I think it did help him somewhat. Uh, but I don't think that's the whole story. Yeah, it's um, definitely not. I mean. It, I- I mean, I mean, I think Dr. Dre saw talent in him, and you know, just I mean, he he didn't care about his skin color, you know, and I mean, didn't I, he? I, I think he did a little bit, maybe, like, maybe a he, little, he saw, in a maybe in a good way. But I know a lot a lot of people at the yeah. label didn't want, you know, this. I mean, let's be yeah. real. Dr. Dre risked his career for him, and it was a great gamble. <laughs> he did, he 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 did, but I think he saw the. Uh, Look, my my fans could be yours. Your fans could be mine. This could be yeah. a great a great business move as well. Um, but I think he he's he says shocking things in a very mm-hmm. gifted way. You you can't look away from him. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't think that his brand of artistry would explode today, just only because they're they're. I think the market now is saturated with people who are willing to say uh, kind of crazy things yeah. I, I don't i don't know if he would hit as much today but he, i don't, he don't think so it. either because well let's be real a lot of rappers today the new rappers anyway they a lot of them sound the same so it's just hard it's hard to get discoverability in general unless you go viral or something i mean that, that's just my yeah. thoughts on that and then um uh, in terms of what i'm picking back i mean Remember me is still going to be on my playlist. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> uh, in terms of maybe, I mean, I've heard the album enough. I'd probably put Marshall Mathers, Amityville, and Criminal in my, into my rotation. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the songs, if there was one skit I could remove, it'd probably be that Ken Kniff skit. That was, that, that was, let's not talk about that. But, <laughs> uh, but otherwise, yeah, just yeah, uh, I, I would, I'd go with probably those three in my rotation and a uh, 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 explicit version of the kids if I can find it. So I'm gonna go with that. All right, um, we've talked about uh, the Marshall Mathers LP enough. What did you guys like from this album? What did you guys not like? Let us know in the comments below. For Netta, a.k.a. Wondrous Net, I'm Justin Tutal for you fool, saying thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and we will see you on the next one. Later.